Uh, I'll quickly tell you about one last example, which is the foot and mouth. So this is actually a p picture of them burning uh, the, the cow carcasses during the 2001 epidemic. It's a disease that spread in cattle um, and sheep uh, and pigs. And basically the only way to kind of, even when the animal's dead, the only way to kind of stop the disease spreading is you have to burn them, basically. And, um, and it, it caused huge problems in the UK at the time. It's highly infectious. It spread from farm to farm. Um, it caused lots of animals on farms to be killed. Um, the outbreak cost the economy between two to four billion pounds in, uh, in 2001. That's a huge amount of money. <laughs> That's in one year. That outbreak lasted one year. Um, and people, uh, this is data showing the spread of it, and you can see these red dots appearing where infections popping up around the UK. So we've got lots of data on this. And at the time, mathematical modelers were involved in trying to help predict what was going to happen and try and help come up with a strategy to kind of control the spread. Okay. And so this is a graph of the, um, the time here and the number of cases that were imported, reported, so the number of infectious farms. And you see that um, actually it kind of follows the infection profile that we'd already been seeing. So the black dots are actually the data and we see that the infection reaches some peak and then dies off. Okay. And the red here is actually a model that was fitted to the data. So we actually came up with a model and that was uh, what we found. So it's actually very close fit. Um, so um, in, to, to keep to time, I'm not, I won't tell you about the, the model, but basically they modelled um, the actual, they modelled each farm and looked at the spread on each farm because as you saw from the map I just showed you, the, um, depending on where you are in the UK, some areas had more of the disease from, than others just because like in the middle around Birmingham, Manchester and so forth, there isn't really much agriculture, it's just cities, so you're not going to get an infection there. So being out where farms are and how connected they were mattered. So they had a spatial model of that and I won't, I'll skip the details of that. Um, but this is, this is what they, they ended up with. So this is the data. So the red shows wh where the farms were infected. And this is what the model predicted. And you can see it actually did an amazing job. And actually, at the time, these models were actually being used to provide guidance from the government policy on how to deal with this disease, on how to cull animals and how to manage the disease. So the modelling at the time was in hugely important in trying to give advice on what we should do and how we should manage this, because we could kind of predict what was going to, go, what was going to happen. So, and, and they could kind of test out strategies and said, well, if we did this, what would happen? So they could kind of give an idea of what what might happen and, and investigate uh, different, different ways of controlling the disease at the time. So I'm going to end there. So hopefully I've given you an idea that mathematics is a great tool for in investigating quite complex things, but by being a little bit creative, you can, you can actually um, understand them by thinking about quite simple objects and actually gain huge amounts of insight into really interesting biological problems. So thank you for listening.